The White House says, yep, they're in a wait and see mode for Israel's response to the attack over the weekend. Roll tape. I think we have to wait and see what the Israelis decide to do. I, I don't know. I've been around allies and alliances my whole professional life, and I can't think of a single one where, if it's a real alliance, where you can't, uh, you can't have honest conversations with one another a little, little bit every now and then and take issue with the way something might be done. Uh, we're not bashful about that with our good friend Israel. But the other thing we're not bashful about, and certainly President Biden's not been bashful about, is making sure that when we say we're going to help Israel defend itself, by goodness, we're going we're gonna to put something behind that. And we did that last night. On the set with me here in New York City, Senator John Thune. Senator, great to have you with us here today. Stuart, nice to be with you. Uh, do you support an aggressive response by Israel to the attack from Iran? I think Israel's going to have to respond. How they do it is going to be a, a call that they make. Um, but clearly an attack on their homeland, a kinetic attack on their homeland, raises the stakes significantly. And I don't think you can let... Uh, that kind of aggression by Iran, which of course has attacked 170 times American troops in Syria and Iraq over the past five months, you can't let that go uh, unresponded to. So I, I believe the Israelis, Israelis will respond. Uh, Leon Panetta used to run the CIA and the Defense Department. He says America has a responsibility to respond directly to Iran. Well, I think that we've let them have their way for way too long, and this administration really has. If you look at trying to, you know, the sanctions relief, trying to get back in or restart the uh, Iran nuclear deal, uh, this administration has shown projected weakness on a regular basis toward Iran. And Iran, the, you know, the only thing they understand is strength. That's the only thing the Ayatollahs get. And so we've got to be supportive with Israel and ensure that uh, the message gets sent that uh, this kind of behavior isn't going to be tolerated. Just, was it just last week? We relax some sanctions on Iran and allow them to get an extra ten billion dollars. That was just a few days ago. Yeah, it's can crazy. we reverse all of that? Well, I, we, yeah, absolutely, we should. You know, clearly. And there, well, would you go so far as to say, look, you hit them financially, and you do that by going after their oil facilities. Right. Obviously, grave risk. The price of oil goes straight up. But sh is that the kind of thing we should be doing? Well, I think you have to hit them where it hurts, and that would hurt them. And it would hurt them. There, there are a number of options. There's their cyber, but I think a, a direct attack on the thing that they count on the most when it comes to their economic vitality as a nation certainly would send a message. And deterrence is really critical. Uh, particularly in that region of the world, that's the only thing these people understand is strength. And I think the United States projecting weakness has, has enabled and encouraged the types of things that happened yesterday. Is the Republican Party united in saying, we support you, Israel, and we're going to support you in any, what you do with Iran? Is the Republican Party united on this? I don't think the President's Party is united. Well, Are you? Absolutely. Clearly, the president's party has domestic politics that they're dealing right. with on this. Um, and it's shaping how they respond to these types of situations. But they are a friend. They are an ally. Um, and, and we've got to be there for them. We've got to have their back. No question about it. Are you a Trump guy? Well, I'm a Trump guy when it's uh, him and Biden, for sure. I mean, I think we've got a clear choice for the American people. And uh, we need to get this done. The country needs strong leadership. You talk about national security being an example on the economy, uh, on energy. There are so many issues where the differences could not be more clear, and the American people are going to have a very clear choice. You're in New York. You're yes, sitting here in New York City. Yeah, how about just, that? Just yeah, right. <laughs> what on earth are you doing here? Just a few, a few blocks down the road, Trump goes on trial today. Right. I call that a political trial. Would you? Absolutely. There's no question about it. Uh, this wasn't brought. You know, they they turned the feds. The feds said they were going to prosecute it. Um, and, uh, you know, the, the U.S. attorney up here said, no, this is something that state of New York, and I think everybody sees it through that lens, is, uh, is going after somebody in, in, in a very political way. And I, I think it's going to be viewed that way. It already is viewed that way by the American people. And um, as, this, as this progresses throughout the course of the week, I think that's going to become more clear. Senator John Thune, thanks for joining with us this morning. Nice Welcome to be with you. York. Thank you. It's nice to be here, Stuart, in, in, in your uh, backyard, as opposed to mine. With a voice like this, this is hardly my backyard. <laughs> but it yeah, well, that's true. It actually it is. <laughs> Mr. Senator, thanks for joining us. Thanks, Appreciate sir. it.